Welcome to 5SPICE, a program for simulating analog circuits. In this video, I'll go through working with SPICE models and subcircuits. SPICE has built-in models for simple parts like resistors. However, devices like diodes and transistors use an external file of parameter values that adjust the model for a particular device. More complex devices like op-amps are modeled with a, with a SPICE subcircuit. The subcircuit description is distributed in a file. These model files are stored in the 5 Spice library, a folder on your computer, and you can add more models to the library. So let's start first by looking in the schematic and taking a look at how we put a schematic symbol down and then link the model to the symbol. After all, we want to run a simulation and if we don't have an actual model connected, nothing's going to happen. So first of all, there are two special circuits in 5SPICE that are used for subcircuits. This is the op-amp symbol. And this is a generic symbol, which you can use for any other type of subcircuit. In addition to that, if we go to the discrete semiconductor menu here, we have such things as a diode. And all of these can be linked. So first of all, we're going to double click and probably have to reposition something. Yes. So when we double click the symbol, it brings up the model selection dialog that we're looking at right now. And for the diode, you'll see diodes, basically. And what you see depends on what you have in the library. The more you add in the library, the more you're going to see something here. So let's just say we select a particular diode without worrying about it very well. Actually, first of all, we can click on the model. And then down here, since these are text files, we can actually see what's in the file. So it's a good thing to take a look and make sure that what's in the file is what you think is in the file. Sometimes you get a surprise. So we can then select the diode and it shows up here in the schematic. So we could then wire this diode into a circuit and go ahead and run a simulation. Now when we come to the more complex models which are represented by subcircuits, there's a little more to be done. So let's double click the op amp. And now we're going to see any subcircuit here that has from five to nine pins. So when it says subcircuit six, that's going to be a six node model. Now the actual op amp could have a different number of nodes or terminals than the SPICE model. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. SPICE models, especially SPICE subcircuits, that's why I'm talking about it specifically, do not have the same number of electrical terminals as the physical package. So we could choose, say, this one. And you can go up here. And basically, there's a listing again. And for the subcircuits, <clears throat> there's an additional item to be attended to. There aren't standards for connecting these subcircuits to symbols. Um, so you, the user, may have to add that connection information. You do that with this button here. So we click on the Add Connection Information. And we can see at the top, it says the library has standard information for this subcircuit. This is because I'm using the professional edition of the program, and it has a database that covers a lot of subcircuits. If you're using the demo or the standard edition, you're going to have to enter this information. So again, we have the description here of the subcircuit. And what's important, and it will try to open to here. So here's the name. It's an LF451. And what's important to take a look at is this connection information here. You can see the actual 
nodes, these will be node numbers, which we'll explain at some other point, but you can see there's five of them. So the sub-circuit will connect, has five electrical connections back to the main circuit. That's what these numbers are representing. And the functions of the connections, since this is an op-amp, we can see the first one here, and you can notice they're not aligned properly. This is very typical. But the first one is the non-inverting input. The second one, pin 2, is the inverting input. Positive voltage supply here would be the third. Negative power supply is the fourth. And the output is the fifth. So you look down here at the functions, and this is just the default for SPICE. And in fact, in this case, positive input, negative input, plus power, minus power, and output matches what we see. So basically, if this wasn't already in the library, you would simply say, save it to the library. In this case, since it's already standard information, I'm not going to do that. Uh, if it's a bit confusing as how to do this setup here, you can click on the Show Me an Example button, and the help will come up with a worked through example. So again, so we, we check that we have connection information, and now we simply accept that, and now we have an LF451 in our circuit. Say you wanted to use an analog MUX or a voltage reference or something like that, this would be the symbol that you'd use. You could use this for an op-amp, but generally you'd be using it for other things. So this is the, what I'd call, the generic symbol or the rectangular symbol. It can be used for any sub-circuit from two nodes, two electrical terminals, to 100 electrical terminals. So anything you want, basically. Um, even things with 50 or 60 terminals, if you have a 32-bit, 32-port MUX, for example. So the same thing would happen here, although it would make more sense if I chose one with more pins. OK, so we can take a look again as to, so let's just say I want to use this. All right, well, we're going to have to change something here. OK, so again, we have standard information. I wasn't sure about that. And the body width was too narrow. The pin names were overlapping each other, so I'm going to widen that. That should be in the library, but for some reason it's not. Uh, but if you had to do this yourself, again, here is the list of connections at the beginning of the subcircuit description. Here's the subcircuit line, and in this case the nodes are numbered in order, so it's very easy to see that. The program then takes all of these names and sticks them in a list for you here. Well, actually, you have to copy them, sorry, and stick them in the list. And there's a cleanup key which can often help out. So if you were entering the information, you would copy that block there, put it in here, clean it up until it looked just like a simple list like this. And then you'd say you'd adjust the body width, and you'd say save to library. You can always come back and change things. Um, so in this case, since we have it in the library, I've changed the body width. And now we're going to simply say, OK, that's what I want. So basically, once you have a model selected, you can run a simulation. It's uh, obviously you need to wire it and all that good stuff. So what happens if you don't find the model that you want? So let's take a look at the tools that we have here. The very first tool is updating and rebuilding the SPICE model library. And you'll, if you're a person who likes to keep up to date on the newest models, you'll be using this quite a bit. So there's several things that we can do here. Number one is if you've added, well, if you need, number one is if you need to add models, read this about the rules on adding models. And then the library is located at different spots in different versions of Windows. Here's where you're going to find it. This is sometimes a hidden directory. So if you don't see it, you can either change the hidden directories and control panel, or you can just press this, 
and you'll get the standard uh, Explorer file, File Explorer there. So basically, we're at the library. We have one branch of the library, which is diodes. BJT is a bipolar tra junction transistor and FETs. Um, macros are part of 5SPICE. And subcircuits, which is basically anything that's not a, a single device. Anything that's not a discrete semiconductor, but is an IC you'd put under subcircuits. You'll notice we have some manufacturers. Whoops, if we go to subcircuits, you'll notice we have some manufacturers. There's some demo things from a book that's part of the program. You can add more manufacturer names here. You can add subfolders um, like we have under this one. It's up to you. So after you've added, made up your folder structure, put in your new files, and all of that, we're done with this, you need to rebuild the library. And this is a special feature of 5SPICE. Basically, 5SPICE then scans all the models in the library, so it builds up its selection lists. And this allows you to see diodes when you have a diode symbol, and bipolar transistors when you do a bipolar transistor, and so forth. It also scans for compatibility problems, and it scans for a few other things. So that's actually quite critical. After you add files, hit the rebuild. And it doesn't actually take too long. OK, and that's a reminder that you might want to add your library to your hard drive backup list. It's actually, I highly recommend that. So there's one final part. Suppose now, you know, where do you get models that you need? Generally, the device manufacturer is the best source for models. They have the most accurate models. They're in the position to develop the most accurate models. They're not just uh, making models out of data sheet values, which is sometimes not very accurate. So basically, you want to go on the web. And what I recommend is going to the Five Spice website, because the website has a whole page of links to companies that make parts, and specifically to generally the model page, SPICE model page on these sites. And also some notes about how to find things on the model page and any issues that we've discovered in using these models with 5SPICE and SPICE programs in general. So you can then go to the manufacturer's site and see if they have a model for the part you want to use and download it directly and put it in the library, as we've already talked about. The other thing that often is good to do, if you can't find it that way, is do a Google search. You know, type in the device number, like LF451, and then SPICE model, and do a search. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Thanks for watching.